on you. But if I haven't explained it a million times, I'm going to explain it a million and one times. Uh, the, psych the psychological aspect of it, the psychological covert of war on hip hop. Psychology is the study of the soul in ancient Kenya. All right? Not the study of the mind. And the reason why I called it the psychological covert war on hip hop, simply because this war that they're waging against the souls of black folks is not necessarily seen. All right? So a lot of times, the way we're orientated, we always deal with the uh, effect instead of the cause. And be honest with you, yourself, not me. By a show of hands, how many really deal with the cause when we go to approach conflict resolution? When you go to resolve something with someone, one system, a couple of people, we always deal with the effect and we get into something, if we would just only stop and say, well, what is the cause of why we're acting like this? And then we can come up with some solutions. Are you following me? It's called the law of karma. Raise your hand if you're religious. What is this? I have been almost a quarter raise my hand, but I can't I just want to prove a point by saying this, that we have to understand we have to understand the divine self and this self. <laughs> and there's a difference between the divine self and the self. It's really the self and the not self. A lot of us do a whole bunch of things to take care of the self. And these are spiritual concepts, they're not religious. So you might not find them in the book. Uh, if you know how to read the book, you'll find them. You may not find them with Reverend Bigfoot on Sunday morning. Are you following me? Because they don't talk about the divine self. They say in order to get to the divine self, you got to give them money so they can take that message to go kind of deal with Jesus and some other people to get to God and bring it back to you. No, you have a direct connection to the divine self. Are you following me? But my question is, how, how many of us in this room truly take care of the business of taking care of the divine self? Be honest with yourself, seriously. This is what we need to get back into. We have to take care of the divine self. What is the difference between the self and the divine self? We did everything this morning to come here today to make ourselves presentable to one another, right or wrong. You may think that you might find a man here today. You may think something else and yada, yada, yada. We put the shower, put the best gear on, whatever, 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 to present ourselves to one another. How are you going to present yourself to the Creator in the last day? Is what I'm getting at. Preparing the divine self. How do you prepare the divine self? First of all, you got to know and understand the divine laws that are operating in nature that have nothing to do with what Reverend Hamhock was teaching on Sunday. It's something totally different. This is not religion. This is spirituality. These things that govern the universe, whether you believe in them or not. <clears throat> so we're not going to get into believing my Griff's opinion. Are you following me? Following me? Yes. Okay, when the Creator says it needs to rain today to water the crops, to have plants and whatnot grow, then it's going to rain regardless of what you have to do with it or not, whether you believe it or not. See, a lot of y'all are caught up in belief. Some people in the room can believe you can go out here on 85, going south, step in front of a Mack truck doing 90, and you think you may live, right? That's your belief. In actual fact, what do you think will happen? Right. <laughs> Thank you. And I don't give a damn how many times you go to church on Sunday, that ain't gonna help your ass. You just need to respect the divine law of what? Of motion, of gravity, relativity. These are divine laws. You may think you can go up on the Western Hotel, all right, eat a Klondike bar, step the hell off, land on your face, and you think you may live. That's your belief. In all actual fact, what will happen to you? Thank you. That's precisely my point. Now, can we pass the train? <laughs> I'm trying to tell you. Seriously, let's get into go box on that one. All right? All right, let's dive into it. So the psychological, which is the study of the psyche, the psyche, which is the soul. We always took care of the soul. Women, you did it too at one point, but you don't care now. When you met a man, you had to vibe with him. It had to soothe your soul. Of course, he had to smell nice and everything else had to be in place, but you felt that he had a heart chakra right along. Not nowadays. We operate on something totally different. So I seen the war that was going on, but I seen it being waged on the souls of the black folks in hip hop. 
His minister servant here was here. He would tell you that hip hop is high into the power, healing our people. All right? So when we talk about the mystical, magical past of the self and the not self, all right, we have to draw the line and separate religion from spirituality. All right? And as Black Doc said, and I think I said a little bit earlier, let's not beat our people up with it. With it. <laughs> if you can go into the religion and get them to understand some things and bring them out of the madness into spirituality, Beautiful. All right? If not, leave the man to lay on the stand. And every blade of grass doesn't grow at the same rate of speed. And I'm telling y'all, the few people that are in this room is probably how much it's going to be. I'm telling you, it's not going to be a lot of people that set this thing off. It's going to be a handful of people. It's never been the masses. It's always going to be a handful of people. This constitutes the 5%. All right? The masses is just not going to get it. Now, how many times you took this kind of information to your girlfriend or your boyfriend or your relative and they damn near had to fight with you? <laughs> and that probably happened to everybody in this room. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Crane. Thank you, Crane. Know what, you know what you need to probably do is we probably need to get a little bit deeper. And I'm begging black people for your permission to get the hell out of this talking about this Illuminati thing because it's killing me. It's keeping me trapped in this prison. There's some other things I'd like to talk about. Are you following me? But every place I go, do you want to talk about the Illuminati shit? And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I want to get out of it. Like I'm stuck in a prison. It's like people, they kind of pigeonhole me as being an Illuminati dude. And I'm like, no, there's other things that I teach. You understand what I'm saying? So, the mystical, so every chance I get in my introduction, I always kind of do something different going to that Illuminati thing. But the mystical magic will pass of the self um, and the not self. One last point on this. Raise your hand if you ever did something that you automatically knew right when you did it, it was not you. Did you go back and correct that particular thing? Okay, you see, they tried to. Well, you didn't have enough energy? You didn't understand it? Huh? Anyway, the black dot, when you hear his name, it's a lot deeper, and a lot of times he don't explain it, but that black dot is our reference point. All right. When you study the black dot by Dr. Richard King, please write that down. I'll make a mental note. Dr. Richard King, the black dot. That's our point of reference. All right. A lot of us have all kind of crazy points of references, and it's, it's really sick because if you have a piece of paper and you're writing, and everyone has signed their signature before, right? Everyone, when you first put the pen to the pad, that's your point of reference on how you start your signature. Everyone in this room have to have a point of reference. Now, I'm not going to put you on the spot, mm -hmm. but someone raise your hand and tell me what your mission statement is, what your purpose in life is. Everyone has to have one. All right? So nobody raise their hand. So by the time we leave this room, before I get through this, I'm going to ask somebody, and I need you all to tell me. Mine is salvation of the soul. So when I wake up in the morning and my feet hit the floor, I give thanks to the Creator, and my first step is my left foot forward trampling evil. And every step I take has to be towards my ultimate goal, which is salvation of the soul. If I meet you and we can buy, it is not soothing the soul. I can't buy with you. I really can't buy with you. We can be cool from a distance, all right, but that's it. So I'm with God having a human experience. I'm not a human in search of spirituality. It's the other way around. We're spirit beings, all right? Operating in this third dimensional paradigm. So you may have a light skinned body and some nice hair. You may have some beautiful locks, some antennas. You may have a nice build. You may have a nice shape. This is third dimensional stuff. Alright, but this is not me. No, this is not me. Everything divine in nature is in you. It's, this is not me. Are you following me? So we have to understand, see this is spiritual, this is not religious. And we have to understand it um, to that particular degree. So we're spirit beings, all right, having um, a human experience. This is why when we study spirituality and we talk about the divine self, we can't give a divine self a complexion like a white Jesus. That's religious. Follow me. Love you all. I'm not even feeling that bother. You'll hear me like, mom. Um, okay, I think. What do you mean you got having a human experience? 
If God is the essence of everything in existence, isn't God the essence of us? God is in us. This is why in Islam they take on the 99 attributes of Allah. Because you're aspects of the Creator. Right? So all you have to do is be yourself. All right, so we take on the attributes. This is what I try to tell, don't tell nobody. But this is why I try to tell the Christians, look, if you kind of take the Jesus thing outside of the realm of it being a physical human being that they actually put on a cross and stabbed him in the side and nailed him and all the blood and blood sacrifice and the human blood sacrifice thing that they Christians do, if we take it out of that realm, then we can probably understand on a deeper level, on an esoteric level. Are you following me? But it's hard for them to get past the physical third dimension. They can't get past it. Alright? So when I say I'm God having a human experience, everything divine is in me. And I'm just giving you aspects of it. So Muslims have 99 attributes. Christians have the 12 disciples. The 12 disciples are 12 different aspects of your divine self. Not your physical self, your divine self. Alright? So he may have 12 aspects of him. That he might want to use only six of them today. Are you following me? Okay, the brother that's standing in the back of the doorway might want to manifest being Al Malik one day, the king. But he can do that. Alright? <coughs> Four. Spirit beings. All that say, somebody help me with this. What do you see? Excuse me? What was up with the back of the Well, my thing is, you're doing it from your point of reference, not me. You see, it's easy for me to stand up here and give it to you. But this is why I ask the question sometimes, what do you see? Now the question is, are you seeing it with here, or are you seeing it with the third eye? The first eye. You have to see it with the first eye, because what this is one of those kind of pictures that you got to look into instead of at it, in order to draw the lesson from it. Alright? Now, I can go to this brother and he can explain, yo, great, let me tell you what I see, son. Um, the white and black thing going on, the white man, because the white pieces always move first. Yada yada yada. The brothers in deep thought got his hat twisted, so he probably in the game. Um, this brother may say, "Yo, grip, I see a voice in the hood. <laughs> yo, yo, uh, I see the, you can't bring a knife to a gunfight. Um, the game of chess is military science and military strategy. Um, the Ku Klux Klan dude is speaking up with his left hand, so that means he's coming from a left paradigm." We're on view, whatever. Somebody else in the back may see something totally different. Alright? I'm looking at it like, why waste your time hating your enemy when you can take that brain power and use it for the game of life and figure out your next move? Are you following me? But this is what we have to do with young people dealing with the psychological covert war on hip hop. We got to be able to interpret this they put the weapon because they're viewing events that are going down on a global scale. And y'all, the parents are not saying anything. Alright? They show up more like a doctor being murdered on TV. Where shorties can watch it. But did you interpret that for them? They lynched and hung Saddam Hussein on TV. In front of the world. Are you following me? Did you interpret that to the shorties? What do you think they're thinking? Can their brains handle this? All the things that are going on. Alright? Are we interpreting these things? Don't worry about the music, babies. Raise our energy, number one. They're interpreting this, these kind of things on their own. Talking about energy, I'm, I'm glad they're playing that. Let me just say one thing about, last one thing about the holiday. I mean, the beat was dope. I don't know how this just brought something to mind, but I it tapped into that other. One other thing I noticed about that, too, is using that high piece. It's really simple. Okay. But listen. How many people seriously celebrated New Year's? Don't go lie, be honest with you. Stay in the house watch 106. You stay in the house and watch 106. Yeah, we just chill. We stayed home. You know? <laughs> Couple of people. Listen. I don't know if it was red pill, blue pill, black doctor dropped this on me. The Kundalini energy rises, based in the spine. It travels up and it taps into the pineal gland. All right. Taps the pineal gland. The pineal gland opens up. And you can enter into those seven realms of consciousness. You can astral plane, you can go to planets, you can quiet everything down, and you can communicate with people without calling them. Alright? Some people say we can communicate with the dead, with the ancestors, whatever. Alright? 
what do white people do every first of the year when the ball drops? You see, the Kundalini is up after we come from the winter solstice. The energy is up. What do our open enemy have to do? They have to drop it down. This is why the, the peach drop, the ball drop. In New York, the big apple drops. They have to bring out Kundalini energy back down to the lower chakras because they have to keep you operating on an animalistic plane. Are you following me? And this is done for millions of us. Like them two talking about Happy New Year. <laughs> you bring it in so called New Year with a bang, getting toasted, throwing a couple back. You understand what I'm saying? Not the way to bring in a New Year. Bringing the Kundalini energy back down. Let's push forward. So when I talk about culture, and I've been showing this slide for the last seven years when I created it, we talk about the old concepts. Traveling on the highway of music, I invited the culture into something new. And uh, this is very critical because culture is tied to everything we do, everything we think. Culture tied is that they're going to transmit ideas, traditions, norms, and values. Alright? So let's understand it to that degree. It enriches the culture. Enrich the culture. Empower the culture. Defend the culture. Advance the interests of the culture. And how then does the culture implant its spirit? That's the English was I don't want to go through that. Let me do it this way. Amos Wilson in that piece was basically talking about how if we don't advance the interests of the culture, some other people will come in like culture bandits and they will label hip hop. They'll call, they'll, they'll break it up into categories and they'll put it in the record store with different labels. Confusing us, separating us, and dividing us, putting a price tag on it, co-opting it, buying some rappers off, giving some rappers mansions and maybachs and whatever. All right, relegating the rest of us, because they only choose a handful. All right, there's only a handful of them that sit at the top. All right. But Amos Wilson in that piece was talking about how they use the vibrational frequency in the music and take the culture over to sell us goods. All right, and I'm gonna show you and prove that. In a few minutes, all right? I want to kind of do this backwards. Let me know if y'all seen this and what y'all think. Of course, y'all see what I put. I put this is mind control, controlling the masses through the manipulation of the unconscious desire. Question is, how do they get these desires inside of a human being? Look at what happened recently. For some pricey limited edition footwear spiraled into chaos this morning. Violence here and across the country for sale of a new pair of Air Jordans. In Seattle, there was pyro spray. In California, shots fired. In New Jersey, a person stabbed. During that time, I was able to see that some of the glass doors of the malls were in place of the world. Oh, wow. Yeah, but it's not Michael Jordan. 
But it's Michael Jordan's name that they control. Black mm -hmm. Dot yeah. said it, and not only in his book, but in his legend. Yes, sir. Even show you how you tie in to the whole aspects of numerology. It's playing on HD on Channel 5. Mm -hmm. We all know that that 5 dealt with that many grand energy. Right. You know what I'm saying? It came out on the 23rd. Number 23, of course, it was the number 11, then it was filling in. So they use and are channeling the whole energies of this universe to show you the potentiality. Energy is energy. You know what I'm saying? You can plug in this outlet to turn this lamp on, or you can get electrocuted with it. It's a mind to how you use it. It's the same thing as the way it's happening. It's these particular energies, and you're seeing that it is becoming a mass energy, right? It can but how do they control the masses though? See, if they control the masses, if they can control, like Black Doc said, they can control one individual. You put Michael George's name on some speakers and you get people to act like this, what else can they do? Exactly. Are you following me? Four o'clock in the morning? You spending five hours on the street? I used to retail on the street store. One of the sisters got arrested because she so left crazy. a in the car. I mean, it's ridiculous. Some people got shot at, stabbed. Mm -hmm. There were fights. People got trampled. Do you remember several yes, years ago when the officer died and Walmart got trampled to death? This is critical. See, they can manipulate and control the masses through the unconscious desires. The question is, how do they get the desire in us to want these sneakers that bad that I will step on your face after you yeah. trip and while you're dying? I'm going to get some sneakers. <laughs> you see, but they're using hip hop. They're using the frequencies. They can even sell them on and, eBay for 500. And, and as one of the pills said, they manipulate numerology. You may not think the, the uh, colors, shapes, the combination of numbers mean anything, but those that put it together know how to manipulate that energy, like he said. So we have to understand that to a degree. You see, he's looking. One of the brothers, he's looking in it. Half of your body, if you see the number, the HD number five in Atlanta. You understand? And, and the colors that they use. Are you following me? Mm -hmm. We know we all old. You know, every time we see the red and blue, it has a lot to do with the Hegelian dialectic principle. The Hegelian dialectic principle could be used for good or evil. Like you said, it's just energy. So we say red and blue pearl, it could be they play off one another to bring about a positive end or result. But we know how the enemy uses the daily dynamic principle. Um, the three step process, who knows it? What is it? What is it? Problem. Problem. Reaction. Reaction. Solution. All controlled by the same person. Same people control the problem. They can control the reaction to the problem. And then they give you the solution. Are you following me? And they control it because they have some agenda behind the daily dynamic principle. Uh, Black Dot says that they give up their party by the machine world taking the very lowest essence of hip hop, violence, drugs, and sex, and giving it maximum exposure. Is this true and can we prove that? I showed this last night, which was very critical. A little bit later on, some sister said, Do you really believe that? I'm like, Sister, this is not about belief. We can prove these things. They take the lowest essence of what we have to offer. That's like, you bringing a dude over your house and you just met him for the first time in the first place he looks at your underwear drawer. <laughs> you know, the lowest essence of what you have to offer and you give it maximum exposure. Are you following me? So I start looking at commercials and say, well, how are they doing it? All right? They're taking music, they're lowering the vibration of the music, and they're using animals. What does that say to the psyche? Come on, talk to me. Animalistic. It always has to be on the animalistic plane, the lower chakras. So the 2010 Kia Soul Anthem commercial with Black Sheep went something like this.
Bibles in an urban setting, rap music, that's true. See, the lowest essence of what we have to offer, it gets maximum exposure. And what they're trying to sell? They're trying to sell a soul. The name of the car is a soul. The Kia soul. And Kia stands for what? Koreans. Koreans in America. So we have to understand this particular dynamic. Are you following me? These people don't do this just to be doing it. There's a reason why. Let me tell you something. Johnny, how many board rooms you think that they sat in to come up with this commercial and somebody had to approve it? Quite a few. Quite a few people had to approve it in order for it to hit. Thank you. So we have to understand this particular dynamic. Did y'all see this one? Yeah. Yeah. A couple of years ago, a few years ago. Yeah, we know those Super Bowl commercials that made millions of dollars for. Um, they made how much? 30 seconds. This is critical. So we have to understand the particular dynamic. And you know, half the time, all they want to sell you some damn Viagra and beer. By showing you a naked white woman, and you fall for it. Are you following me? But this one was lizards and little rodents. And in the clip, you'll see one of them eat another one. It's like a doggy dog worm. Are you following me? But with black music behind it. We have to understand the dynamics. Every day, 
on that kind of stupidity. It's just the fact that you just don't know. Are you following me? This is how they plan on pulling it off. They invented this, this machine that they have, and I'm telling you, they go after it in a real, real deep way. I thought I had my book up here, but you see the movie, um, don't tell me. Paycheck with Ben Affleck. Yes. You might have seen the movie where they wiped his brain clean and he had, he had left clues to what he was building for this company. After he finished building it for him, they brought him in and they didn't want the product. Guess what they wanted? They wanted the information from his brain. So they laid him, laid him, laid him down on the table, put this machine to his brain and extracted their information, IP, intellectual property, from his brain. So what Ben Affleck did was left clues so he can go back and remember what he invented for these people. Page, you remember Minority Report with uh, Tom Cruise? That was a deep movie. What was it about? The pre-crime. The pre cog Remember the pre cogs The pre cog was designed to foresee you committing a crime and stop the crime before it happened. Now, you know Spielberg <coughs> was behind that stuff, right? Did y'all know that? Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Look into Spielberg. But check this out, this is what's coming down now. It's not coming down the pipe, it's here. Check it out. Thank you. 